I think if you downplay virilization to anything, any, really anything less than a half, um, it sends a message because it generally I, I do try to say like, hey, do whatever the fuck you want to do. I don't care. If you don't care about side effects, that's fine. It's not on me to tell you that the side effects, the negative effects, whatever, are too much. It doesn't like, it, it is not my place. You, listener, it is not your place to be like, ooh, this girl, her voice sounds like shit. I mean, I don't even know how we would discover any of the anatomical changes. Like, it's way too far. But I would, like, I would strongly, I would strongly suggest that, like, when you, the listener, is, um, assessing, you know, okay, has someone incurred side effects? Have they, have they gone too far? I think the lens in which we have to look at that from is relative to what they consider is too far. Generally, most people that I speak to, they want no changes. They want, they only want the anabolism. And that's if we're talking about anabolics, if we're talking about non-androgenic tools. So clenbuterol, uh, thyroid replacement therapy. So T4, T3, metformin, GH, L-carnitine, fuck it, yohimbine. Cool. Like tell them start and we can go down like the chain and like come up with all these non-anabolics, but generally like anything that's going to act on the androgen receptor these are ones that like, frankly, I, I think we got to be really careful with even something like SARMs. Like I, I still, I still think the, the tone in which we talk about this and it's really, it's not for the advanced user competitor athlete. This is for this, like comes from a place, at least this is why I do it. I know that there are a lot of people in the space who they hear like, oh, you take, you take PEDs and they assume that this is one in the same of just simply buying a fat burner at a GNC or you know, I guess ordering something online. Um, it's just a little harder to access and you got to know a contact or whatever. And I was very fortunate that when I got into the sport, I had people in my corner, I had people around me who were like, Hey, don't make that jump until one, you you actually need it, but also don't make that jump until you can concede and like just accept that there is a risk associated with using these things. And if you're not okay with it, I wouldn't I wouldn't make that decision prematurely. I think when we downplay really the the potential of these drugs, which frankly was the case for a lot of the time that I've been in the sport. So many people, so many people in the, like the realm of like 2016 to really like now, so many people be like, oh, Anavar is like female friendly. It's safe. It's like, it's what everyone takes. So it's okay. If it wasn't okay, everyone wouldn't take it. There are so many logical fallacies that have, you know, just been hounded, um, around drugs that honestly, I, I do think have resulted in individuals using things they shouldn't use. Um, doses they shouldn't use or using them in a way that ultimately like for a length of time that is reckless. Now I want to be clear is like, it's not, it's not up to me to say like, this is a, a reckless use or this is an incorrect use. Incorrect implies that there's a right and wrong way. And when we're talking about virilization, when we're talking about making that decision for yourself, that's where it's such a subjective, I would say, measure that you can't put everyone into the same category of risk acceptance. Now, when I got into the sport, there were people using drugs. There were girls using drugs that like, I mean, frankly, I, I, I didn't do enough digging around, you know, the people that I, I was near and close to. I just knew they were using something. Um, yeah, I would hear names, but I didn't really have an interest because at the time I was like, I'm not there yet. So like this, this, this isn't a great interest to me. Um, through the community, through friendships I formed, there were people that were like, yeah, like I'm never using this again because 
I did get side effects early on. I did get, I did incur negative effects. My voice changed. My clit grew like I had terrible acne. Like there were just, there were, there were stories and like, I was young, I was naive. So I was like, okay, like I just assumed that's what all drugs did. And that was like inevitable, um, regardless of, of specific compound, regardless of anabolic or non-anabolic. I think since then, since 2015, there's been a lot more people, um, on social media and within the, the space of like bikini, like the bikini division, female side of things who've come out and talked about their use some of which are sharing like, Hey, like you need to be informed of the potential here. And I think that's great. There's also been a lot of people who've come out and who've downplayed essentially what can happen. I'll tell you, like, I didn't realize, I didn't know that this was as big of a problem really until I started taking on more clients who were coming to me specifically for PED help. And they were like, Hey, like you, you seem to share similar values that I do. Um, I want to do this as safe as possible. What is the best method? And we kind of cycle through, okay, like what have they taken previously? What have been the dosages? What have been the durations? What was the indication? What was the reason behind it? And the thing that really struck me as a, commonality amongst most people is the indication was very unclear. The indication, like the reason that their coach put them on this was to drive fat loss or, or muscle growth. Yet the phase in which these things were used wasn't totally sensible. And to some extent I can get like, I can get behind, you know, if a competitor comes to me and they're like, I'm really insistent, I want to use this drug. Um, and they, they understand the risk. Okay. Like I, I might not think it's totally appropriate, but if they've done everything and like they, they've decided that, okay, like I'm willing to be generally safe with this approach. I'm like, okay, here are the conditions. Here's the way in which I would go about this. And the reason is like even someone, cause I have had these clients where they're, they're very insistent. Like, I don't want to wait. I want to get the most out of what we're doing. And I mean, assuming that we go through that period where it's like, okay, I can see that they are growing and they're actually willing to, you know, be very adherent, very communicative about, um, you know, all aspects of the program. And I can like objectively see, okay, you're on track. <laughs> Yes. And you have goals that require us to be more aggressive. Okay. Yeah. I might say for me, that wouldn't be a reasonable approach or for a different athlete, that wouldn't be a a reasonable approach. But ultimately, if they're going to do it anyway, and if they're going to do it under the guidance of someone who may not be as safe or who frankly just might not care as much about the overall outcome, and yeah, okay, you know, that that's a very, it's a very narrow index of individuals I work with. And I think we have to keep that in mind um, whenever we listen to different people's cycles and whenever we listen to what people have or haven't used or the reasoning behind it. There's a, a lot of bro lore surrounding the use of different compounds and I think they talked about this too in 13, so I'm not going to just beat it to death here again, but like the framework in which you make these decisions comes down to the need. Okay. Well, when we're going through anabolics, I don't think a lot of people are at the point where it is truly necessitated, but if they decide that I would like to use this, if they haven't maxed out their natural potential. If they're at a point, they're like, Hey, like I'm, I'm going to be in and out of the sport, um, within a, within a few years, because that's the the period I have. And then I'm done. Okay. You know, maybe, maybe we do take a more aggressive approach. That's, that's their prerogative. They're, they're allowed to do that. Like, that's not necessarily my place to tell them like, no, like we're only like, I, I can put the framework in place, but ultimately I am in the business of like 
helping people make better decisions. And yes, that starts with them being informed, but ultimately it is their decision.